Bitcoin is everywhere. Coinbase is the number one app on the App Store, and so of course to capitalize on this, we're doing a segment. Yes, so before you put your entire life savings into Bitcoin, Matt, I think there are two key questions we have to answer. Question number one, are cryptocurrencies actually useful? Is there anything they can do that fiat currencies we use today, dollars, euros, etc., can't? Now the second question is, will Bitcoin be the winner among the available cryptocurrencies? Obviously there are coins like Ethereum out there, others perhaps yet to be created, and to invest all your money in Bitcoin, you really have to think that it's going to be the number one cryptocurrency. So in regards to its usefulness, of course cryptocurrencies are useful. Bitcoin is fantastic for money laundering. We in fact live in a golden age of money laundering because cryptocurrencies allow you to move from country to country without going through all these nasty regulatory processes that exist today. However, Senate Bill 1241 is on the docket and it would start regulating some of these exchanges just like normal financial institutions, so that benefit would go away. Now to your second question, will Bitcoin be the dominant cryptocurrency? I'm a bit skeptical, mostly because it has some inherent flaws of being the first cryptocurrency, like you know the block size is not ideal and the transaction speed is really slow that make me think there'll probably be another currency that pops up along the way. So I certainly agree with you, Matt, on question one. The cryptocurrencies do have value. There are things like transferring money between countries. And also if you're someone that you know is skeptical about the future of, say, the US government, you might want to invest in Bitcoin as kind of a diversification play. There have been some prominent economists who come out against Bitcoin. The Nobel Prize winner Joseph Stiglitz, for example, said that Bitcoin ought to be outlawed because it serves no useful social function. But we invest in things all the time that don't really have any useful social function. I mean, you look at things like weapons companies, uh, cigarette manufacturers, all kinds of examples of, of things that aren't really doing the world a whole lot of good. The one thing I would say is very concerning to me is that the volume of Bitcoin transactions has not really gone up a ton despite a ton of people buying into places like Coinbase, which says to me people are just buying this thing to buy and hold it and sell it to some other sucker, versus actually use it to buy things in the real world. Yeah, I think that's why you get the analogies to the tulip bubble and other bubbles in the past. And one thing that really concerns me about Bitcoin as a financial investment is about 40% of all Bitcoin in existence is held by less than 1,000 people. Now, as an unregulated market, you can imagine some pump and dump schemes that may potentially go on, and in general, I think this makes it very, very risky for the naive investor. The other consideration that's popped up lately that we should talk about is the environmental risk of Bitcoin. It actually takes energy and CPU resources to mine these things, and what happens to the environment if we're devoting so many resources to them? So I'm not particularly concerned about this. Um, for one, I think our estimates of the energy usage of Bitcoin are, are probably pretty flawed. I don't think we really have a true picture of how much energy it's using. Um, so I think a lot of the alarmist articles that have been written uh, are just being written for collects versus any actual data. The other thing I would say is that as Bitcoin mining increases, there's sort of a diminishing marginal benefit to the amount of energy you use to mine Bitcoins, whereby at some point it, it just becomes better to, to use that energy to you know, power someone's home uh, versus get a minuscule chance of, of actually mining a Bitcoin. You know, my issue is I just don't see any market force that would stop us from continuing to pay more and more in energy costs to mine Bitcoin. You can imagine a scenario where Bitcoin is worth 200,000 US dollars. Why wouldn't you be willing to pay $150,000 to mine that coin? Right? You still get a $50,000 return. So you can imagine this going up and up and up. However, there is somewhat of a limiter on this, which is there are only 21 million Bitcoins available. So I see this as somewhat of a race between being able to mine all of the available coins and how much energy it will actually cost us to do that. And for this reason, I think the US left and other you know, environmental and liberal parties are going to pick up on this idea and try to regulate this a bit. Well, as is often the case, I don't think regulation is going to be particularly effective. Uh, I think it's going to be very difficult to determine if someone is using power to mine Bitcoins versus for some legitimate uh, computing purpose. A bigger problem, I think, for Bitcoin is the slow transaction speed, where transactions can often take around 10 minutes, and if you're trying to create a dominant global currency, this is a little bit of a drawback. Uh, the one thing I think Bitcoin advocates would say to this is that they're counting on the arrival of the so-called Lightning Network, uh, which would enable kind of off-chain transactions of Bitcoin much more quickly than is currently possible. As we're knocking down the vulnerabilities of Bitcoin, it would be remiss not to mention the cryptography itself, SHA-256. Now, it's very difficult to crack any number of keys, but it may be possible to crack one particular key. Because of the way the blockchain works, you could identify the owner of a particular block and say, oh, this happens to be Merrill Lynch. It would be very valuable to have their billions of dollars. And so because of that, you could imagine some of these attacks are going to increase in the future. 
Now, to summarize, I think there will be blockchain-based financial transactions going forward. I just think they're going to be regulated and treated maybe like you see credit card transactions treated today. I think I generally agree with you on your projection for the future of Bitcoin. Uh, there was a really interesting tweet by Benedict Evans, who's a venture capitalist here. And Benedict basically compared Bitcoin to the dawn of the internet 20 years ago. And he said that we remember the people who said that the internet would never amount to anything and kind of laugh at their bad prediction, but we forget the people who actually overpromised the value of the internet, who said it could end poverty or, or wars or all kinds of bad things. And I think we're in the same sort of situation with Bitcoin, um, where Bitcoin will eventually settle into a, a sort of middle ground whereby it lives alongside the fiat currencies we have today, the dollars, the euros, but it doesn't become this you know, global cryptocurrency that just takes over the money system completely uh, and is used for absolutely everything. Instead, like we talked about earlier in the segment, it'll become kind of a niche thing that's used to, say, transfer money between countries. And so I don't think the value of Bitcoin will crash to zero, uh, but I don't think it'll go to you know, $250,000 either. Uh, and I'll leave it up to you, the viewer, uh, to determine exactly where in that narrow range uh, the value of Bitcoin will eventually fall. This has been Random Talkers. Thank you for tuning in.